Now, last group, Underground Power. Hi, everybody. I'm Andrew Pirizzi, CEO of Underground Power. Uh, we spent five minutes talking about traffic, road traffic. How do you think is it uh, a source of waste or a source of revenues? Well, 30 million vehicles on, on Italian highways and more than one billion vehicles just here in California say that should be a revenue. Let's, let's see how. Every time one of us does the slow down from 30 to 10, it discharges more than 20 watt hours of energy. Every time. Can you imagine how much energy is it? Well, uh, talking about uh, uh, money, can you believe it or not, more than $50,000 are wasted in gas and brakes every year in every road crossing, medium road crossing. So what's a clean idea? Recover the energy with the brakes. Well, but how? By means of our flat modular device that can be installed at ground level or over the surface in decelerating lanes. The, the car grows up. It's, uh, there is a speed absorption. The device collects the kinetic energy, converts it to an electrical one, and sent to the national grid, or you can use it for local purposes. In any case, think that you are realizing CO2 compensation of traffic from traffic itself. And this is great. This is very cool. Cool, yeah, but is it also profitable? Well, a medium power plant, 10 meters long, um, should be cost $50,000 in the road, uh, in the road crossing. If you have 50,000 cars per day, yeah, the BEP will be in 10 years without any incentive from government. If you have 10,000 cars per day, you will reach it in five years. And this is a medium case, not best case. The best case is that one. <laughs> Highways, 1.5 million investment, $300,000 revenues per year. Can you imagine that one in Los Angeles City? It's amazing. Really? So, what's the market? Every decelerating lane with more than 5,000 vehicles per day. A huge market, uh, quite uncountable. We estimated 26 billion just in Europe, but here in America, I really think that should be uncountable. So, I think you're guessing yourself, who is the client? The public, since uh, working with public should be a mess. I agree with you, no public. Private, private business, <laughs> that's it. But since uh, private has money, but public has roads, we have to arrange a, a, a negotiation. Let me, let me make an example. You have uh, a private business who spends $50,000 per year in electricity, and uh, his activity stands in front, right in front of the road with uh, 10,000 vehicles crossing in front of his activity every day. He puts down two power plants, $24,000 per year. The power plant costed $100,000. So he is, he is going to saving uh, something like $22,000 per year. Uh, what the rest? But the main issue is, uh, was it for public, for the city hall? 5% of revenues for the energy without any risk of investment. This is a win-win approach. The only approach, the best one, just to let them spread out this technology. This is the approach we are using in Italy, just to put down our first 10 installations this year in order to go through the serious production the next year when uh, the certification process will be done. Our financials designed the company with 25 million revenues in the fifth year. As you can see, we are looking for uh, one billion, one million, one million two, um, but we are going to be positive. I uh, know you, you can't see over that. I, um, you're going to be positive at the third year. So we already found a company with 115, and we are looking 1.2, 1.4 million uh, in order to feed sales, marketing, equipment, and research and development. This is our team, very expertise, more than 50 years. Um, in engineering, financing, industrials, and research. 
We already granted with uh, $90,000 uh, grants by two business plan competition, one in Monza, one in uh, Trento, and with a young night shift for innovation from uh, our province. And that's all. Thanks for your attention. Last speech of today is done by Luca Rossettini with The Orbit. Uh, I guess the buffet is starts to be very appealing, so what I offer in exchange is a ride to space to see what's going on up there. My name is Luca Rossettini, I'm CEO and co-founder of The Orbit. And The Orbit is a device for satellites to bring them back into the atmosphere and destroy them when they stop working, minimizing the risk of collision with other spacecraft of people on the Earth and liability for space owners. And the company was funded last year in Italy thanks to a venture capital seed investment and now is established in US as well. Um, you know, this is the team. Uh, although in the past I was so close to become an astronaut, we are not a bunch of kids dreaming of flying into space. We have more than 40 years of experience in the space fields. But, however, if you want to travel into space, you have to be aware that up there there are more than 6,000 satellites uh, flying at 80,000 miles per hour, but only 800 are actually working. All the others are completely uncontrolled. Did you hear about the satellites that fell a few months ago on the Earth? At this moment, somewhere overhead, an old broken satellite is plummeting to Earth. No one's quite sure exactly where it will land. And then this may sound like a very familiar story, and it should. This is the third satellite to crash back to Earth in under five months. This isn't the last one that's going to be coming down. In, uh, in about uh, a couple years, in 2013, uh, a U.S. Uh, Japanese satellite is going to fall out of space. Today, satellite owners spend a huge amount of money to solve this problem, so to move their satellites up and down to avoid collisions and for the deorbiting phase that is compulsory by law. And also, if you want to send something into space, you will be liable for any damages you will produce in space or on the Earth. And, you know, the satellite market is pretty big. We are talking about 150 billion growing 12% every year. So we are facing a very critical situation. 1,200 new satellites are going to be launched in the next eight years. So how do we solve the space debris problem? If you look out there, you can find solutions that are not very, very good. Uh, they are either not economically uh, convenient for satellite owners, so satellite owners are not going to apply to, to use the solutions, or they are not really decreasing the risk of collisions. So that's the orbit. The orbit is a device with a very high reliable, uh, reliable propulsive technologies. You plug the device on the satellite before launch, and when the satellites, for any reason, stop working, you just activate the orbit that push the satellite in a very precise and safe orbit to burn the satellite into the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. The orbit is completely independent from the satellite, so it works even if the satellite is not working, and allow very quick re-entry, just a few hours compared to the, to the 25 years required today by the international regulations. And we're not just talking about, uh, you know, risk avoidance benefit for satellite owners. We are talking about making also more revenues, increasing the mission uh, time of the satellites that can allow satellite owners to make up to $20 million more for every mission. And we are pretty well in, in introduced in the industry, so we, knows, uh, we know uh, the aerospace industry and the national and international governative agencies. And I'm proud to announce that we just tested the demonstrators uh, at the end of January that, you know, by chance I have it here. <laughs> this is the kid. And this is the test that we made in Germany. And 
the results of the test was that the performance were outstanding, much more higher than what we were expecting. So these guys can fly. It doesn't have propellant inside, so you are sure here. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but still, this guy works. Uh, what we are asking for is $10 million for the development of the flight model, the one that really goes up, the, the one that we can sell, and the go-to-market phase. So thank you very much. Now, if you want to know more about my business model, model the floor is yours. All right. The floor is yours. Come on, time for a couple of questions. Is this guy safe? Safe here? Yeah, safe. Might be the time, but okay, all I, I can see when I look at this, I see a, a violin maker. Um, I keep it in my head. I keep it in there. <laughs> All right, five minutes for a few questions. I have a question for the orbit. Yeah. Uh, there are four major satellite manufacturers, Astro, Loral, Lockheed Martin, and Boeing. How do you expect to work with them? Um, the satellite manufacturers are my direct customers, but I will work with indirect customers, the satellite, uh, the satellite operators. They write the requirements for the satellite, so they are the one that I'm going to talk to. They decide the requirements to put the orbit on board because it's much more convenient for them. So the satellite manufacturer will, will buy the orbiting device uh, to satisfy the requirements. So this is the... The, the relationship. So essentially you're a supplier of subcomponents to the bus? Yes. I have a question for the orbit. The first one, um, how big is the market? You said basically 200 satellites in two years, that means 100 satellites per year, so how big can be your company? And the second question is, maybe stupid, but why don't you just simply push out the satellites and turn it towards the dirt? You no, know, we do both actually. So we we bring back the satellite. I, I I answer first the the second question, otherwise we will forget. So we first uh, the satellites that are close to the Earth, we bring the satellite and bring back to the Earth and and burn into the atmosphere. The satellites like geostationary satellite, telecommunication satellites, they are far away from the Earth. So we push them in a graveyard orbit and let it there. So today there are no uh, convenience in, uh, you know, in the orbiting down to the Earth. The uh, yeah, uh, the revenue side, okay, this is a, a, a pretty new market. So there are some other systems like mine that are passive devices, uh, not active like mine. Uh, so we, we try to compare with already existing market. For example, the like engine markets, like for, for satellites, that is about $13 billion uh, market, uh, $2, $2 billion market just for the parts. Uh, but if you imagine all the satellites, and these guys is worth, uh, these guys is worth a million of dollars each. So uh, you can calculate how big is the market. It's, uh, uh, I mean, it's, and you know it's a it's a growing market. So, um, for uh, the orbit, for the orbit, um, I was wondering. Um, um, I'm sorry, I forgot my question. <laughs> uh, for uh, underground power, um, you know, these days companies establish a top ten list of things they have to do, and they do the top three. Where in the world of corporate priorities, it's a nice thing to do, but where in the world of corporate priorities, let alone long-term government projects, um, is, is, is your product? How do you, what's your strategy for getting in the priority queue to actually get something installed and implemented in enough scale to become a big business? Yeah, uh, good point. We, um, we are very, we know that we are in front of a black, uh, um, a black situation. Since uh, nobody before us did something like that, there is n nobody on the market, uh, but we have maybe three competitors all around the world. Uh, there is no, uh, no strategy predetermined. Pre we just uh, thought uh, about uh, an optimization to go up with uh, uh, our monies and guaranteeing uh, to the investors the best, the best uh, time of return. But uh, we can negotiate uh, or study together another strategy. Uh, you know, you can uh, even uh, sell the, the energy. 
no, and not the plant. You can uh, loan the, the, the plant for the big events, the big sport events. Uh, I am from Monza, we have a Formula One Grand Prix. Uh, we are thinking to loan to the, the public authorities our plants, since uh, there are 200,000 vehicles in three days over there, just on, just on four roads. You produce energy, sell on the, on the net, and that's all. Since uh, the plants are very easy to, to transport, to install, uh, it should be possible. We are st also studying uh, a small device that can be installed uh, uh, in drive through for example, of uh, fast foods, or in, in, here in US you have a lot of, of, of drive throughs uh, or in, uh, in parking lots. I thought that here in San Francisco, just to, uh, let, just to try a pipe plant, we, can, we could arrange uh, an, uh, a business with a priority park who has a 20, 80, 80 parking lots here in San Francisco, and sure, it should be a very showroom case. Uh, you know, you can uh, dress up uh, the strategy that you want. Just uh, discuss the best one. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so the question was, um, you talked about extending mission life. How do, how do you extend mission life? Yeah, um, today satellite operators are required by international regulation to deorbit the satellite at the end of life and put it in, an, in a special orbit that in 25 years get rid of the satellite. So they have to save some fuel that put on board to do this operation. Uh, since, you know, uh, when you buy a tank for satellites, you buy that tank. You can you can decide to, to buy it bigger or lower. So when you decide the mission, that's the time, and you try to put as much as fuel as you can. So uh, you are wasting enough fuel to do up to six months of operation in space. And six months of operations are worth millions of dollars. So if you use the, uh, actually, you know, the, it's nice. Only one satellite uh, over three is able to really deorbit at the end of life. And very few of them reach the end of life. So with the orbit, you have, I mean, you're pretty sure that you are going to the orbit the satellite and you are going to make more money.